Good morning. Today is Mother's Day, May the 14th. I'm Troy and this is Honey Ridge Farm. Thought I'd do a quick video of the honey house. I've got it not complete, uh, but enough where I can start extracting honey and that's what's fixing to happen. Um, may have to be a uh, weekend after next. We got some stuff going on um, this weekend, so but we're getting everything cleaned up and ready to go for extracting honey. But glad to finally have a place to put all the honey stuff and, uh, and give you a little tour this morning. This is looking out the front door. It's the only glass in the room. I went ahead and put in a, I don't know if it's a, I guess it's a French door, but both sides open if I need it to. And I can see out and see who's in the driveway, which is really all I need. I've got everything sealed up. It's uh, I got two by six walls, uh, R19 insulation, and as you can see, I got foam sealer everywhere. I still got a lot to clean up. Still stuff to do, but it's sealed up and it's waterproof. This is a heavy duty vinyl that's on the walls and everything is caulked so I can spray water in here, which I've always wanted to do. This is a door, that's the door into the the big part of the garage, the woodwork inside, over that way. Um, this is the start of my extraction line, and this is um, not a professional or commercial type setup. It's going more toward that line, but hopefully you can uh, see by this that you can use some smaller stuff. You don't have to have um, you big, humongous stuff to be able to extract honey. Uh, but I'll show you my equipment here uh, that I've got. I'll move some of this stuff out of the way. Um, but I'm, I am fixing to upgrade some of it, but we'll see how it goes. It's just a capping tank. I'll uncap into here and try to get most of the honey out through just uh, gravity dripping off of it. Uh, I've had this tank for a while, as you can see by some of the wear. was able to get it cleaned up yesterday. Put in a Polonis. Um, I, I didn't know whether to go with a in the wall uh, mini split, they call it. I ended up going with a portable air conditioner that also has heat. This is a remote for it. You can set it on the temperature that you want. It's set on 74, I think, right now. But I got the unit shut off, so it's, it is a little bit noisy. Um, but for the time I'll be in here, I think it'll be fine. But you can set it where it'll take the temperature off of this, or you can turn this off and have the temperature on the unit. Um, just uh, gauge the temperature and keep the temperature to what you have the unit set at. This is just a cappings tank here with the lid. Definitely need a bigger one of these. Need to get that lid off there so the water can dry. But the frames will set in here perfect and drain until I'm ready to uh, uh, put them in the extractor. You can see the valve there at the bottom. This is a capping Walter T. Kelly cappings tank, I guess. It's got a water jacket in the bottom with a heating element. Uh, and you can put everything in here and you get pretty, it's of course not perfect, but you get pretty clean wax that comes out of here. So. I happened to have all of last year's capping steel and some other wax. So I put it on here yesterday and melted it on. It's hard to see in this picture, but it got pretty good, some pretty good wax. But all the uh, slum gum stays in the tank for the most part, and I take it out with that scraper. What do I do with it? Yeah, just scrape it out with that scraper the best I can and get all the black slum gum out of it. So. It gives you a good start to get in your wax process. Um, the only extractor that I've ever had, I've had, uh, I had 50 hives before when I was doing it and I've got probably 60 to 70 now. I'm not sure, it depends on how many I make it, I guess, but I've only ever used a two frame extractor. One of my mentors uh, was an old guy and he had a hundred hives and uh, he used a two frame extractor. Even with the amount of honey we got last year, we were we used this for uh, a day. I think we did 60, 60 gallons, let's see. yeah, about 60 gallons of my run out of honey. And we extracted it all on this, my dad and I, and it only 
uh, we only extracted for a day. So electric extractors are nice and I will probably get one uh, hopefully this year. Uh, but are they necessary is debatable. But I got it all cleaned up, got it all washed. In here I can wash everything, all the walls. This wall is metal. All the walls have that vinyl on it. And I've got a floor drain so I can set everything in the floor and uh, spray it off with that water hose right here in the honey house. And then I've got a uh, just a holding tank. This is one that I had. I bought two new ones that are over here uh, that come with stands, but I only got two stands. I need two more stands to put my other holding tanks on. But I come out of this tank into a bucket through a not, uh, double screen. And then I go into that. I put those screens on top with a nylon cloth between them and go into this tank and then any sediment which is nil, uh, but if there was any sediment, it would rise to the top in here. You leave it set for a couple of days with it uh, warm and it'll rise to the top and uh, get out any further sediment that's left in there. So that's what the Hoden tanks, they're good for that. My sink has been an ordeal, uh, finding it, getting it hooked up, getting all the leaks fixed, getting everything taken care of, but I think I finally got it. For the most part, I say that, and it'll be leaking somewhere. But everything drains to my floor drain. You see where I sprayed off everything, left kind of a mess. In the floor still, I did mop some, but it sure ain't perfect yet. Uh, some of the stuff I washed, I sprayed some of that stuff back on that lid, I'll have to wash it again. Uh, but my screens, and I can say the water hose, I can wash my buckets out a lot easier now. Um, it's a whole lot better system. This is the Polonis uh, portable air conditioner I was talking about. It has a hose that goes outside. I, we'll see if I've got it in the right spot or not. I did it when I uh, put it in and uh, still want to put a, a mop sink over here. Um, I've got the fittings for it down here where I can run my mop sink. So I think there's room beside that for that, but that might not be the perfect spot. We'll see. I might raise it up and put it on a shelf up here toward the top. I still want to treat that ceiling too. I'm going to put something um, over the wafer board. We'll see what ends up going up there. Um, and then I just did that yesterday just to seal off any airflow. The room is definitely not airtight, but it's pretty tight. Uh, you can't close you can't just swing the door and close it because there's it traps so much air in here the door won't close you have to actually grab a hold of it and close the door so my buckets i'm getting cleaned up i use that little heater in this pot for melting wax i'll melt my that wax down i'll put it in there and then uh, kind of finish it off and get it finished up there's my little screen i use into a coffee can i don't see my yeah there's my coffee can and my hot knife, use that for uncapping some bag of lids, some wire. Um, don't know if I ever use wire again. I kind of like in the plastic foundation now. Use uh, acorn uh, foundation. My other holding tanks, um, I've got for now, this is a bucket heater. Squeegees come in really handy. Uh, I use just a little bit of vegetable oil to grease the uh, lube spots on the uh, extractor. Uh, and some more buckets that need cleaning up. My mop. I use this cart a lot for rolling around. Supers. I've got my um, stinky boards or I forget what you call them. But your this goes on the on the felt on that board. Honey be gone. Um, but that's what you put on this board. You spray it lightly on it, put it on top of the house and it drives the bees out of the super so you can bring them in. And that stuff's not that stinky. There's uh, Bego, I think is the real stinky stuff. Uh, then again, just a trash can and a chair and stool to get up top. So I've got epoxy on the floor. Again, the heavy vinyl on the walls sealed and I still got to do a ceiling treatment. I did do um, resets lights. I wasn't sure it was going to be enough light, uh, but I think it's 
fine. I'm happy with the light output that it puts out. I think it's around 900 lumens uh, that puts out. One of my boxes was a little too far away to connect the wires. So I gotta get up in the attic and move my box a little bit for that one. Um, but anyway, it makes a nice spot. It was nice to get in here yesterday. It took a while, but I could spray all this stuff right in the floor and uh, have it go out the floor drain. So very glad to have it. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting some boxes. This wall, along this wall here is where I'll set all the stoopers. I can uh, stack them up. I got a big dolly that I can use to bring them in here. And then I'll stack them up along this wall and uh, work on them uh, as I get time. But I'm, I think I'm gonna have to, again, it's only uh, middle of May, so, uh, and I've run out of supers, so I need to get some extracted and then get them back out on the hives to be able to catch all the honey crop. So, but they'll go on that wall. So anyway, hopefully be able to do some uh, more videos in here and uh, uh, where I don't have to worry about <laughs> what other stuff is around. And, uh, you know, I got a garage and uh, it was a lot of work last year to clean up the garage good enough to be able to extract honey. And I know that's what a lot of people do. And I see some videos and some tight spaces and I know everybody can't do this, but this is uh, uh, something that I've wanted. It's a nice room that I can heat and cool. I can heat it up and I'll probably heat it up and use it for a hot room get it good and warm overnight and uh, get the honey warm and then I'll cool it off to come in here and work. And uh, I think the honey will stay warm enough uh, that it will extract easy. So it's combination hot room, temperature controlled environment when you work in and hopefully have everything you need. I'm gonna put some shelves up here at the top. I'll have uh, probably wire shelving going all the way around the top for my accessories. I still got a lot of accessories to put in here but I'll trim all that uh, foam ceiling out and then put shelves around the top for um, for having the accessories and everything. Probably over the door too. The only thing I'm really not too happy with is the vinyl didn't seal down as good as I wanted. It had a double, kind of like a uh, countertop glue contact cement, uh, but it's got some bubbles in it. It's stuck good, but it's got some bubbles in it. But I think once I get the shelving and everything in here, I don't think you'll notice it. And then I'm going to look at two, I'm gonna get rid of these plastic tables and I got two stainless steel tables I'm going to look at tomorrow night. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully get some uh, honey extraction videos in here in the next uh, couple weeks and uh, show y'all some of the stuff. Um, you know, you see a lot of honey houses and videos, but sometimes it's commercial guys. And I know most of us are not commercial. So maybe this will give some people some ideas. And you don't have to have the big expensive, heavy duty stuff to extract uh, honey. Um, so hopefully this gives people some ideas of the way to do it on uh, maybe a smaller scale. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and. We'll be back in another another video soon. See y'all then.